Have you seen price trends relating directly to the popularity of fountain pens, supply and demand, or more to factors such as the manufacturer location with given import taxation, pen nib and component material? What do you see as the most influential and governing cohort for pen pricing? So there may be some factor popularity, but um, you know, that could affect it maybe in different ways. I think it affects it like over the long, long haul. But honestly, from my experience in the pen industry, most of the manufacturers are not looking and being like, oh, it seems like we could make more money on this pen if we just charge more. Let's just jack up the price and take more money from these suckers. Certainly that happens um, in a lot of industries and there may be some of that happening with certain brands. Um, most of those that it tends to happen usually happens over a long period of time. It's not like you'll see fountain pen prices like fluctuating like this. I mean, you'll see retail, individual retailers that'll discount and have clearances and new things and old things and all that. Um, that could affect pricing, you know, within a certain degree. But generally you're not seeing like prices jack up or go way down Oh, you know, that drastically, um, other than just like, there's a special edition, it comes out, it's hot, there's kind of the last few of them, a retailer's trying to clear them out, they'll discount the price to close them out. That kind of thing can happen a little bit, that, that maybe could be considered popularity and whatnot, but from the manufacturer side, they're not saying, oh, well, we know blue is more popular, so we're gonna come out with a blue, whatever, that's a bad example, we're gonna come out with a blue Lamy and we're gonna charge $10 more because we know people will want blue more. That's not really how it goes. There tends to be a lot of consistency within the fountain pen uh, manufacturer side of things anyway. Um, I think there's some, there's some relationship there, like a lot of times what will happen is if there's something that's really popular and a manufacturer has a hard time getting supply of something, um, or you know they have to go through extra effort to manufacture a certain supply of something, and it ends up costing more, or they have to manufacture it within a certain time frame, or there's a tool that breaks in order to be able to manufacture that. That kind of stuff ends up happening. But honestly, you know, we're in a niche industry here. You know, a lot of times what happens is with new pen models, especially, there's R&D costs, there's tooling costs and other things. There's branding and a lot of that, just kind of like these upfront fixed costs that happen whenever they launch any pen model. If it ends up being kind of a flop, then they usually lose money or they don't make a lot of money. Um, but, uh, and so the price has to be kind of high. And sometimes you'll run into this with brands where you'll see a pen that comes out and it's like it's a new model from an existing brand and you're like, why is it so expensive? It's because there's a lot of R&D and other costs that have gone into that and it's like, if it ends up selling really well over time, those costs can get spread out over more pens, but if they don't sell that many pens, all of the mold costs and you know tooling costs and research and development and marketing, branding, advertising, all that kind of stuff, distribution, all of that has to get baked into fewer pens. So they use, you know, depending on how, how much a manufacturer wants to invest in developing a certain new line and what payback period they're expecting and what the R&D costs were, um, that can affect the price. Um, that's not really a supply demand type thing, except there is a little bit of a cart before the horse kind of relationship. If a pen is overpriced, then the chance of it lasting a long time to sell a lot of pens and spread out those costs is lower, right? So there is a lot of interesting things that has to happen from behind the scenes, but honestly what happens a lot more is um, people that are in the industry, like us retailers, we have an awareness of like about pen, where pens should fall based on everything else that's available and what, you know, price sensitivity there is and all this kind of stuff. And so manufacturers will have an idea for a certain pen and if it ends up where they can only manufacture it and it has to be at a certain expensive price, then it's like they just won't make it because it won't be practical, you know what I mean? Um, they're not gonna have, you know, some slightly different version of a pen that costs $200 more. It's probably not gonna sell that well unless there's something really, really special that goes on with it. Um, you know, the, the market will just not bear that cost. So they just won't make it. Um, so there's a lot, a lot of conversation on the manufacturing side of where is this pen supposed to sell at? Where's the market for this? What other comparable pens are out there? And do we think that we can make the pen economically enough to fit within where we think you all, the, co the, the consumers, if you will, um, will uh, we'll be able to bear that price and find it interesting. So there's a lot of that back and forth and conversations that go on. That's a lot of where the manufacturers are asking their distributors uh, locally in their different regions where that will make sense or retailers, individual retailers, they may ask that as well. Um, and so that's, that's more where it goes in. And then some of the price fluctuations you see, especially across the world on given pen models, 
have to do with currency fluctuations, taxes, duties, tariffs, um, shipping costs, all those things that are more localized, those become factors as well and can affect pricing uh, for sure. Um, uh, and then sometimes what I see is, is more like incidental factors at play, um, like a shortage of certain material, parts, labor, you know, sometimes with certain brands, you know, if they're making some specialty type of thing, there's some certain like plating that needs to have, this is one of the most common things is like either nibs or plating or something like that where it's a more specialty part of the pen um, that needs to happen that has to be outsourced or provided by a, a third party um, you know, company, um, if that third party reaches their capacity or goes under or changes their process somehow, that can affect the price of a given product. So you might see prices of certain things jump up here and there because there was some environmental regulation that happened in Europe that affects the electroplating that was used for whatever given pen. And now all of a sudden it costs three times more to get something electric plated, boom, price has to go up. So uh, there's more of that kind of stuff that drives um, the prices that happen on most pens than anything else from what I can tell. Um, and then, you know, what I've seen sometimes is like something like Pilot Roshizuku. Um, they have the, the really nice bottles, you know. Um, yeah, I like this one, the Compeki right here. So they had these nice handmade bottles when they first came out with it. Um, the ink was $35 MSRP. And, um, you know, it sold reasonably well. It was definitely a premium ink, but popular ink. Um, and what happened is once they hit a certain scale, a certain volume, they were actually able to invest in more machinery and equipment and stuff like that to better mass produce the bottles, which actually caused the price to go down. So the fact that there was increased demand got the manufacturing um, process to a point where they were able to get um, you know, the costs down quite a lot. I think that actually is what uh, is more impacting in the fountain pen industry because the, really the whole industry is pretty small in terms of manufacturing in general. You think about like how many, like uh, I've watched like episodes of how it's made and stuff like that. And you think about like how many radiators and car door handles and you know paper clips and, and stuff like that that you like don't even really think about but you're like, oh yeah, that stuff is everywhere. And you look at the manufacturing facilities for things that size and then you look at a fountain pen manufacturer and you're like, oh, there's 25 people that work at this company. Like it is an insignificantly small industry. Um, so oftentimes what happens is prices are high because it's so manual and so you know, there's just no mass produced equipment to invest in because you're not selling millions and millions and millions of things, you know, like you are with like a ballpoint pen that can be 10 cents. Um, they're selling, you know, 8 billion of them or whatever. Um, that's just not the case in the fountain pen industry. So like, you know, for the case with uh, Pilot, they were able to mass produce their bottles and actually lowered the price ongoing. So now um, we used to charge $28 a bottle and now we charge $20 a bottle. So pretty significant cost. And a lot of that was just because of the glass, the bottle and the production around it. So there's that. Mm -hmm.